On today's show. Are the Golden State Warriors legit title contenders? Oh my Gordon, the Cavs lose again. And we introduce you to Brandon Knight and the meme team. It's Thursday, November 6th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters. Whether you're joining us live online, listening to the podcast, or catching us on NBA TV, we're very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets. I can't talk today. Alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. Lots to get to today. To my right, starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. And finally, it's the Aussie. It's Lee Ellis. Girls. Mm. Lily. Mm. Lily. All right, yes, we have tons to get to on tonight's show, but we're going to start in California where the Golden State Warriors blitzed the Clippers from the get-go last night. They led by as many as 29 before the Clippers bench made it a little closer. In the end, though, Warriors won 21-104. It's tough to really call uh, or pick a statement game in the first week of November, but this was a, a huge win, of course, between this somewhat growing rivalry between the Clippers For and sure. the Warriors. And uh, they look phenomenal and are, remain one of the only undefeated teams in the league. Grizzlies 5-0, and Rockets 5-0, and and the Warriors 4-0. And you see there, doing it, all these teams really, but doing it, especially the Warriors, on both sides of the ball. Offensively seventh right now in the league and the best defense. Sounds so, weird. The question for, of course, the table and everyone watching, chime in on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Are the Warriors, you know, legit title contenders? Have they earned that right to be included with some of your best in your spurs and, and so on? Well, in week one, I think you can put them in that sort of category because everyone's buying in. I mean, if you want to pick a team that is ready to play, it's this team and everyone's buying in. Andre Iguodala's gone to the bench and he's comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. David Lee's first game back, he came off the bench. Everyone is comfortable with their roles already and that gives Steve Kerr just so many options mm -hmm. with this team. Very much Not so. only are they buying into the system, but they're buying in into passing because this team did not pass the ball a ton last year, which is odd to say you think this team is so ultra talented, have so many weapons, they must have passed a lot last year. No, they actually mm. passes per game. The advanced metrics, they were 30th last year. That is crazy. Last, right? That is wild. Assist per game, they're at eighth, now up to second, and their secondary assist per game. Love that stat. I love that stat, Lee. They're first <laughs> right now. They're moving the ball. Yeah, they, they are. are. And, sure. and, and a big difference I've noticed is Andrew Bogut is a lot more involved in offense. Now, they don't look to him to score the ball, but they just want him in there in that sort of Joe Kim Noah role where he can facilitate the offense. He's a very, very good pass for the ball. And when he does things like that where he penetrates, it opens up the floor for the other guys like Clay Thompson, like Steph Curry, because yeah. defenders don't know, quite know what to do. And also, if you look, you're talking about those stats. Last year, Andrew Bogut averaged 40 touches per game. This season, he's already averaging 54 touches per game, which just shows that Steve Kerr said, hey, listen, we don't just want you to be there. He's known as a great defender protecting the paint. We want you involved in offense, and that's going to get his confidence up. Because, again, we know he's not the guy they're going to go to to score a lot of points in the, in the low post. But get him out in the offense, and things run through him, and it opens up so much spacing for the, yeah. for the Warriors. Yeah, they're what? actually playing to their strengths this year, whereas last year it was kind of too many post-ups. They posted up Harrison Barnes all the time. Mm -hmm. Clay Thompson, even Jermaine O'Neal, not even in the league anymore. Last year, you would have maybe considered them a dark horse title contender, but now that they actually have a coach who really knows how to exploit what they're good at, you have to consider them a title t contender, I think, because they probably have the best home court advantage in the league. Once they hit two or three threes in a row, the place is going I, crazy, and it yeah. feels like you're, you're never right. going to score. And you sort of go through like a checklist of what you want in a legit title contender. I mean, first you start with, do you have star players that can take over a game mm -hmm. when it gets close? They, of course, have Steph Curry, an all-star. They arguably have another one, or at least a borderline all-star in Klay Thompson. Mm -hmm. So they have guys that are not afraid to take shots late. That's a big thing when you're looking at a legit title contender. The other thing to me is defensively, you want to be top 10, top 5, whatever. Yeah. Right now, they're the best. And that was a bit of a surprise. They were up there, of course, last year, and you worried, or you wondered at least, Curry was going to come in, try and fix the offense. But with the defense stay... And it, it has, if yeah. not better right now. Yeah, that, that's the amazing thing about me for Steve Kerr. I mean, I know, again, it's only four games in, but he already seems to have a really good handle on what he's doing and what he wants his team to focus on. And again, defensively is where it starts because they wouldn't be 4-0 if they weren't getting stops, and they are. And it's easy to forget that Andrew Bogut wasn't there when they lost the Los Angeles mm -hmm. Clippers in that first round series yeah. last year, and it took them to Game 7, and it was such a close matchup. But Blake Griffin 
had his ways with the bigs, quote unquote bigs, because they weren't that big, without Andrew Bogut. And Bogut, uh, he is spectacular on the offensive end. He's just got to stay healthy because he does yeah. so much yeah. for, for Clay and Steph. You see him flying out there with the dribble towards the three-point line, and, and then a guard will come flying at him. So they already have that lane pre-made yeah. for them because Bogut's handles are incredible. He looks so comfortable when he dribbles up the floor I from know. the backcourt mm -hmm. to the frontcourt. Yeah. He looks like a guard, and, and, and Clay is benefiting from it. He only got to the line twice last night, uh, but that, that different game though. Different Clay Thompson game, yeah. has talked about that he should give some of his uh, new contract money <laughs> yeah. to Bogut for yeah. you know well, opening up a lot of space for him. Yeah. Of course, giant picks. Screens, yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. Steph Curry's yeah, talked about that in the past as well. Like he's, his body is so wide that he can get out and only takes when you're a shooting a shooter like these guys, you only need half a centimeter of room and you can get a shot off and Bogut's able to help create Please that. use inches on this. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, half yeah. an inch. Uh, but no, so you go through, you got the star players, you've got of course a, a still a top five defense in the league. I think mm -hmm. another thing, a little underrated this season compared to last year's Warriors, their their bench is better. Yeah. This is a this is a deeper team. It almost was a blessing in disguise maybe with the Lee injury there and Draymond Green thrown into that starting lineup. He's been phenomenal, was huge against the Cavs. Yes. Last night. I wouldn't mind David Lee staying on the bench. Yeah, yeah. And they've got a ridiculous balance now. Yeah. With their defensive uh, front court now in the starting lineup. And then you go to the bench and you've got great offense with Andre Iguodala and David Lee, uh, along with some defense. I mean, if you want a defensive backcourt, you throw out Sean Livingston and Clay Thompson. You want to go all offense, you throw out Steph and Barbosa. Yeah. You can just mix and match yeah. so perfectly. And if they're already buying in now in week one, that bodes well for the rest of the season. I'm okay with calling a bunch of teams in the West championship contenders. I think we're just sort of used to, ah, we look at the East, there's two. Or you look at the NBA just, you know, historically, yep. ah, we got a handful, four or five, but I don't care. Any of those eight teams, if they come out of the West, are you surprised? Mm. You got a legit well, chance. Yeah. That's absolutely true. I wouldn't be surprised. But, well, let's look at the other side of the ball in that game last night. Following the loss, Clippers head coach Doc Rivers, he talked to the media and he just ripped his team. He was genuinely unimpressed, Tass, yeah. with how they were playing. Lots to say. Yeah, here's Doc on their quote-unquote performance, because it was lousy. That's just soft, as you can probably get in a game. One foul at halftime? Are you kidding me? What we found <laughs> is that they're way better than us right now. If this was a playoff series, we'd lose in four games. It would be a destruction. Right now, this is not the same group from last year, and it is the same group, so we have to figure that out. I didn't say much. I just let them blow smoke up each other. That's all they did, in my opinion. I just think if you're going to talk, you got to be real. They've been unimpressive coming into this game. It was an unimpressive 3 and one record, and they were just unimpressive in this game. This is a classic Doc yeah, Rivers exactly. move, though, here. Yeah, you to know, fire up his team. To sure. fire up his squad. Yeah, they had the, their uh, players-only meeting, and yeah. that's what he's sort of alluding to there. Just the, sort of, are they talking in circles in there? Let's start actually playing and bringing yeah. it on the court. But... Yeah, they've they've looked sluggish. Yeah, they have, for they, sure. You know, and, and I know a lot of people, you can try and you pinpoint a couple of things, but like Blake Griffin maybe not attacking as much or going inside. He's sort of, he's worked on the jump shots, so mm. he's taking a whole lot more of those. Defensively, guys are standing around. There's not a lot of help defense right now. But Blake, he's just trying to fire them up. Yeah, I mean, Blake Griffin had one rebound last night, and, and you can't always look at the box score and say, well, that's, that dictates his performance. But if Blake Griffin's not even really up there contesting for rebounds when they're getting killed early on, it's a sign that they're just not mentally in the game right yet. Last we season, though. continuity Sorry, quite a bit and how it usually helps guys, but I think Doc's right, it kind of hurts them. It seems like they just came into this year thinking we've been together now for three years and we're just going to pick up right where we left off and that, that has not been the case. Yeah, all. last year though, let's not forget, the Clippers started defensively at least through the first 10 or 11 games were nearly dead last. It took a while for them to, for whatever reason, yeah. to start putting in the effort or just working better on that end of the floor together. So it's a, it's early, of course, in yeah. the season, but I love that he's already <laughs> yeah. already trying to get them going there with anything he can. You know, these teams, next time they play in LA, the Clippers will probably win by 25 and we'll be looking at the Warriors and saying, oh, they've got all these problems as well. Because these teams, this is a real boxing match between it them. Is. They love just belting the hell out of each I other. I think the next matchup between these two teams, Christmas Day. Oh. So hopefully it's not a 25 point <laughs> yeah. blow. Hopefully we get a more entertaining game. But yeah, I love, love these two teams going at it. Got to take a break, but when we return, I want you to get your Taco Bell ready because we got some buzzer beaters to discuss. <laughs> Harris, Hayward, and the starters will be right back, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the starters. 12 games on last night. We had a lot of great games, and we had two decided at the buzzer. I want to show them to you first. Tobias Harris with the deep 
jumper at the buzzer to give the Magic their first victory in style there, 91-89 over the Sixers. You think Sam Hinkie pumped his fist when that went <laughs> Oh, easy now, <laughs> they easy. They remain winless. Fourth year forward there, 18 points, eight boards on eight of 18 shooting. Nice little dance there, but one better probably than Harris, Gordon Hayward with the Jazz, step back, oh my beats God. the Cavs, place goes bonkers. Gets him the 102 100 victory. Look at young Dante. Uh, you don't look, see the step back. back look at that. Yeah, nah. that off, two, huh? two big dribbles to yeah. the right and then the step back. In he book. looks like he got stronger. We got to check the anatomy on Gordon Hayward. <laughs> yeah, he, he got did, stronger yeah. in the offseason. Oh, Hashtag yeah. muscle watch. Yeah, Le LeBron slipping there on the court helped in that <laughs> scenario. But uh, yeah, both actual both buzzer beaters well contested there. Yeah. yeah. Nice Mute there for the Sixers and I believe it was Thompson there mm -hmm. for the Cavs getting out there, but guys knocking them down. But Congratulations to the Jazz and their fans. I know they're pumped up with that victory. But we have to talk about the Cavs a little bit here. Uh, maybe not the what is wrong with them, are they done, are they not going to make the playoffs. But I am curious to hear what you guys think about the six assists, which is all the Cavaliers' tally last night, which is crazy. It's not very many. It is crazy. crazy. There's six assists, but they still score 100 points. That's how good they are, that they can uh, manufacture points in one-on-one -on -one matchups. Six assists, Kyrie still goes for 34, and Braun still goes for 31. So you're not worried? I, I'm not worried at this point. I mean, they have to play more team basketball. Uh, this is basically the opposite of the Golden State Warriors that we talked about in the first segment. They're buying in while the Cavs aren't buying into That's this true. offensive system. It is bonkers when you look at the numbers that there were 24 players last night that had six or more assists on their own. <laughs> and the Cavs had six amongst their team. I mean, yes. LeBron was upset, he made lots of comments saying that we basically had four until the last minute and a half, but you look at the points created by assists throughout the league per 48 minutes, the Hawks, Warriors that we mentioned are up at the top, and the Cavs are dead last. Yeah, so this wasn't just last yeah. night. This is no. through the first couple of games here. They're yeah. just not racking up a lot of assists because it looks to us here and everyone watching at home, it is a lot of one-on-one -on -one action. Yeah. Fest. It yeah. reminds you, really, to bring it back up again, the 2010 Heat where it's like, Hey, you go, your turn. Let's see what you can do. No, yeah. if not, okay, my turn. When it was Wade, Bosch, and LeBron trying to figure things out mm -hmm. a little bit. Well, this is the pressure that's on David Blatt now because he's never coached in the league. He's never coached with this sort of talent around him. He has to figure out a role for everybody and then they have to go out and execute that plan. And it's difficult to do that, you know, four or five games in. I know they've had some preseason stuff, but it just shows preseason really doesn't count for anything. You've got to get out, play real games, back to back, on the road, playing different teams every night, and then you're going to figure out what you're going to do. And that's why, to me, it's kind of actually on LeBron, too because he's the one guy who does have experience playing in a share the ball scenario and he's got to be the guy that everything originates from for me. I mean, it's fun to have Kyrie Irving handle the ball and doing all of his spin moves, but LeBron can function as a point guard. Kyrie can come off the ball. LeBron gets the ball moving to everybody. He can run your offense and not be the main guy. It, it is sort of uh, interesting to watch LeBron try and figure out, do I carry this team or do I try and like teach a lesson yeah. here and that we need to move the ball we got to share it, pass the rock around to win games. So, like, teach him a lesson through these losses. He can losses. do both, though, too, yeah. right? He you can do both. Because he, he, he has looked somewhat lethargic in these first few games. Yeah, and Gordon Hayward was punishing him yesterday yeah. on the defensive end. We're talking about the offense, but we're showing you a graphic here illustrating the heat back when LeBron went to South Beach, joined up with, with Bosch and Wade through their first four games versus this, you know, new power three in Cleveland and their first four games. The Heat were three and one, the Cavs were one and three, but look at the look at the details and the numbers here. To me, what screams or, or jumps out off that page is the defense. Mm -hmm. They were still winning games, the yeah. Heat were, way back in the day when they first came together defensively. They were struggling really just as much as the Cavs are offensively right now, but defensively, the Cavs are just getting lit up by a lot of these teams. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If teams shooting 50%, you are gonna struggle to win a lot of games. Well, LeBron James says, in the words of the great Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> relax. Uh, relax. <laughs> relax, everyone. LeBron taking to Twitter uh, this afternoon to tweet that. Wants everyone to know, don't worry, we're early here. I'm with you on, on the defensive end. I mean, that, that makes sense. And, and Kyrie Irving can put on a show when there's a couple games a week in the FIBA tournament uh, during the summer defensively. But, you know, when it's a Wednesday night in Utah, yep. are you going to show up and are you going to perform? And, and he's getting out ahead of passing lanes and sort of gambling, and it wasn't working on the defensive end. Again, the offense wasn't pretty, but they scored 100 mm, points, true. so they should get a W. They're getting the other team's best shot every single night right. of this season. So Utah is, is pumped to see this team come into their building, and so they played great, and they passed a ridiculous amount, 150 times more than the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's crazy. Here, it's wild. Here's the question. 
How long do you give the Cavs? Is it 82 20, games. 25 yeah. games? Is it the entire season? I mean, that's a legit question. Yeah. yeah. How long can they, quote unquote, struggle here until you well, start going, well, they got to think about trading so and so or changing the lineup so and so? And I know Blatt's already doing that with Marion getting in there. Well, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's you're probably going to see in the next two or three games a different LeBron. I think he's not going to let this thing get too much. So you think he is going to just try and I, carry I think the he, I think he's going to have to sort of send another message out like, like that and say, right, guys, I'm going to take you on, on my back for a while here, but I expect everyone else to lift their work rate as well. Because I, I mean, I can't see them fall into one and five, one and six or anything like that. Maybe. They're still out west, so who knows? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, you know, they're, they're, they're playing the east. Friday, yeah. They play in the east, so I mean, it, I know. they can be sort of comfortable with their situation. Yeah. Even if they are 1-5, they're but, not going to panic. But you mentioned a good point, though. Like, Denver Nuggets have struggled to start the season, but they see the Cavs right now. They're a wounded animal. They're going to try to attack them and run them off the court. Well, anytime yep. LeBron, I think, too, is coming into your building. I mean, the Cavs are yeah. on the road, just like it has been for LeBron's entire career. You're going to have a packed house. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be a lot of energy in there, and, and the team is, of course, going to want to try and take down this super team, just like it was with the Heat. You have Kyrie Irving in both of their first couple of games this year asking if this is what a playoff atmosphere right. is like in the first two games you're of the right. season. And I mean, you play like that and you're thinking that it's such an overwhelming thing. He's used to the big lights. When those big lights are on, he takes over. And maybe that's part of what's playing into things here. Lee, yeah, I wanted to ask you, you said they're a wounded animal. If they're a particular wounded animal, what would the Cavs be? <laughs> the Cavs are a, uh, they're like in the in the jungle. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's like a, uh, well, while you think of it, while you think of it, like we'll a take a break. It's like a gazelle that's trying okay. to run away from the lion. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, when we return, the starting five in this week's meme team. D Wade, Draymond Green, and a whole lot more. You're watching the starters. Right. Welcome back to the starters. Every Thursday, we're going to start bringing you the meme team, which is some of the weird and wacky moments from the past seven days. So here is the starting five for this Thursday's meme team. At number five, Sacramento Kings small forward and equipment manager Omri Caspi <laughs> helps out DeMarcus Cousins with the headband. That's a bro move right there. I love the nice. fist pound yeah. at the end. Yeah. Respect. Thanks, bro. Respect. Nice. Number four, after an offensive foul was called on the heat, watch Wade pull off the very difficult <laughs> horse shot, bouncing the ball from the free throw line. Casually. That's straight good. in, doesn't kiss off the glass, roll around. Beautiful. That's an H. At number three, Draymond Green buries the three in the eye of Blake Griffin. Then he buries his tongue right by his face. I mean, that's right in his personal yeah. space for like that's taunting seven it. seconds. That's not how MJ Several did it. Steps. Did Blake notice that? Because <laughs> if he did, he should have done something about it, I feel at, like. at number Rabbit. two, we got some wacky turnovers here. First, Tony Parker. I don't know where he was throwing that one, but going the other way, poor Jeff Teague. You know, a tough, a tough catch. He oh, does manage to catch it but then uh, loses his balance. That's the way to punish the Spurs. Back-to-back so. -back turnover. And this had to be number one. Brandon Knight had a good game, but not on this play. He can't decide what to do. Oh. And he just throws it out of bounds. Looks like he's doing a salsa in the air. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, hey. He's gonna scissor legs and the toss out of bounds. Poor guy got caught up in the air there. There's the, the meme team for this Thursday. But one more sort of random note, and this one's off the court. Last night, following a Wolves victory, and that's, a, that's important here, Ricky Rubio, had a funny reaction to teammate Nikola Pekovic, who was giving a cliche answer about moving on and forgetting the win. And that is why Rubio, what? Why are we forgetting a win and moving on? Santa Claus isn't real? Uh, so uh, as you can imagine, Twitter had a lot of fun with uh, that particular screen grab of uh, Ricky Rubio looking Some a little funny confused. funny stuff last night. Amazing stuff. All right, time to unleash the unicorn. It's time for the starters. Fantasy Minute. Little boy. Little boy. Little boy, yeah, remember Little boy? Yeah. Well, it's back. We had a lot of crazy lines last night. Rondo had a triple double, his 20th of his career. That's a whoa man with Tim Duncan. Oh <laughs> man, Duncan, yes. With uh, double double, he had three steals and six blocks. That's why we're throwing him on there. But your top three of the whoa boys, Demarcus John Wall and Kyle Lowry, DMC, in just 22 minutes, 22 minutes versus the Nuggets, guys, put up 30 points on 10 of 14 shooting, 10 of 11 at the line, 11 boards. One assist, two steals, and three turnovers. Not a nice he was, in the fame He was <laughs> asking the Nuggets bench whether they were kidding the way they were playing him. At number two, whoa oh boy, John Wall versus the Pacers. It was in a lot more minutes than DeMarcus, but 31 points, hit a three, six boards, 10 assists, three steals, and a block. Had five turnovers, which was the reason he didn't get the number one whoa oh boy of the night, because that's going to Kyle Lowry. Up with the Raptors versus the Celtics. 35 points on 12 of 17 shooting, 9 of 10 at the line, two three pointers, four boards, 
three assists, two steals, and zero turnovers. And was a huge reason the Raptors won that game. So, there you Kyle go. Lowry was an animal. He is a bull or a bulldog. bulldog. Whatever. He's a bulldog. Honey badger, yes. maybe? Yes. Something I mean, like he that. He did whatever he, is. He's he wanted. He's built like a bulldog. So, That's yes, true. some incredible lines from uh, so many games uh, on the schedule last night. We got to take one more break, but when we return, I'm told we have a controversial, very solid play of the night. It is. Really like they're always They always <laughs> are, but this one more so than others. So, come on back. You're watching the third. Welcome back to the starters. The pick 'em payoff is a battle between Tass and I, where we pick games every night. The loser has to do something embarrassing at the end of the month. This is what we did last year. There were turkey costumes and cool pants and egg tossing. Right here, huh? Yeah. So we're doing this, of course, again. And if you have a suggestion, by the way, for uh, what we should be doing uh, as a term of the payoff, let us know. Hashtag starters. But a quick look at last night's results. I'm a 10 and 5 on the month. Tass, 8 and 7. I was right about the Raptors. Went down to the wire. <laughs> Tass, <laughs> once again, picking against the Raps. That happened a lot last year, too. But yeah, this was the, uh, what the up, turning Tom. point. Kyle Lowry with the steal, leading to the DeRozan dunk. I mean, people were talking about the dunk, but it was the steal. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's it's a bowl or a pit bull, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, just dogs. That's what we talk about <laughs> with small point guards, right? Amazing, <laughs> amazing play. And uh, again, helped me get the win. Yes. So I'm up two games. Yep. On Tass mm -hmm. in the pick of payoffs. Uh, tonight's picks, only two games, TNT doubleheader. Uh, nothing's gonna change after tonight because both of us like the Rockets and the Mavs in Portland. So we like the Rockets at home to the Spurs and the Mavs on the road in Portland. A little surprised neither of us went with the Trailblazers at home, but the Mavs have already lost one TNT game. It's not gonna happen again. Uh, I almost wanted to change my pick because we have learned that Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili will not be playing mm -hmm. for the Spurs. Pop is resting them because they're old guys. He's doing it again. They're tired already. He's doing it again. But uh, no, we're going Rockets and Mavs. So uh, we'll see what happens. But let's turn to Lee now for the controversial, very solid play of the night. Where are we going, Lee? We're going to San Antonio. And it is a little controversial oh here because Tim Duncan. Yeah, I know. Look at this great steal Tim Duncan makes behind the back pass to Bobo. But he gets fouled and doesn't actually complete what? the play. But there's a defensive play oh, on Tim Duncan. On. Look at this. But then it's, and then the dribble. And it's fancy. And then look at that. It's not too fancy for Tim Duncan, <laughs> and then he puts it in, and that's what I call no. a very no. solid no. defensive no. 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 Five on the solid. Look, I, I understand. Usually they have to convert the basket, but that defensive. There are 29 thing. other teams, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they made don't, shots. Hey, don't blame me. Blame <laughs> Again, Spurs. tonight on TNT, Spurs, Rockets, Mavericks, Blazers. Join us on tomorrow's Drop Podcast and the television show, and we're going to talk about those games and a whole lot more. Yes, we will be right here. Thanks for joining us today, and Remember, a good bagel and cream cheese is a schmiracle. Race the night, people.